all right hello everyone and today we will discuss about some of the very very important functions that we use in excel now these are really important for your interviews and if you are someone who uses excel in a day to day basis this formulas are going to save you now let's start with the very basic ones now i have a list of data here that is i have the production details for a particular company i have around 20 different datas i need to find out the sum of these datas for that we can use the sum function let's start whenever we are writing a formula we'll always start it by applying the equal to symbol if we don't write the equal to symbol it won't be registered as a formula at all let's see without the equal to symbol s u m bracket and i close the bracket and i press enter see it is just a te text here it hasn't registered as a formula if this needs to be registered as a formula we need to start writing this with an equal to symbol let's clear this and write again is equal to sum s u m now you have a list of formulas that start with the letter sum or the excel is suggesting you the possible formula that you might be looking for now we need s u m sum you can select it from here or you can click tab as well after you type in the formula and open the parenthesis excel will show you the syntax of what you need to add here it is showing to put the number 1 let's put a random number here 4 Now I want the sum of four and five. Let's put five. I can put how many ever number I want here, and after that I can close the parenthesis and click enter. As you can see, the answer is nine. Four plus five is equal to nine. But I don't want some random numbers sum, right? I want the sum of these all numbers. Let's see how we can do it. Let's start writing. is equal to s u m sum and inside the parenthesis let us select this range now 2 to 21 a 2 to 21 is the range i have selected let me close the parenthesis and click enter see i have got the sum of this range now maybe i don't want only this much range maybe in future i might add a number here for example 200 see it is not getting changed here in order for this to automatically change we need to create this in a dynamic way or an other exa easy example is that we can just select the entire column as the range let's say we selected a to a as the range here and clicked enter now we have the sum of whatever value is there in this a column let us add one more digit here 100 as you can see the sum got changed this was a very basic example of the sum function let us get into a little more complex function with sum property now what if i want to take the sum of a range but with certain conditions that is if the production number is more than 200 i want the sum of those digits only so when i take the sum of this range i don't want 177 to be included in that or if there is any other value that is below 200 c for example 130 i don't want that value to be added any value that is more than 200 i want the sum of that let us see is equal to sum but we want to put a condition also so let us collide two functions that is sum function and if function so it will be sum if function and inside that let us declare the range here our range is a to a now comma now it wants us to declare the criteria the criteria here is that it needs to be greater than 200 now the criteria we should always write it as a string that is inside the double inverted 
commas and let us close the bracket. As you can see in the syntax, whichever syntax keyword that is inside the square bracket is optional. So you need not have to declare it. But if it is not inside the square bracket, for example, the range and criteria, those are mandatory fields. Whenever you're using a function, you should compulsorily use these mandatory fields. Let us close the bracket and click enter. Now we have the sum of all the data inside this range, which has value more than 200. Now let's see, let's make this 200 as 500 and see the answer. See, now only those values which has values greater than 500 is taken into consideration while summing it up. Let's move to the next function. Now, here we had one condition, that is the value should be more than this. Now, what if I have more conditions? I can't use sum if in that situation. In that situation, I should use sum ifs, that is multiple if condition collided with sum function. Let's write is equal to sum if and an yes. That is sum ifs bracket open. We have to declare the sum range that is a to a comma. We can declare the criteria range one that is in which range we have the criteria. Now in this sheet we have only one range that is a. In other uh, cases we might have different different uh, fields or columns etc. Let me show you an example of such a sheet. Okay, so in this sheet, we have two columns, that is one is production and one is month. Inside the month field, we have January, February, March, April, and again repeating January, February, March, April. So we have four months inside this range, that is January, February, March, and April. Now, we have a condition that we need the sum of production values wherein the month is April and the value is greater than 500. So the conditions are the month should be April. That is one condition and the value should be greater than 500 or 300. Let's uh, as an example. Now we have two exam two uh, conditions, right? Let's write in is equal to sum ifs. And we should take the sum range, the range which we want to take the sum of. So that is a to a comma. Let's tell them the criteria range one. That is in which field we want to put the criteria on. Let us discuss about the criteria which we had. The first one is the month should be April. In which field should I put the that criteria in? In month field, right? So I'm selecting B to B because that is my criteria range one, comma. Now what is my criteria? Now, my criteria is that it should be April. I don't have to put equal to April or anything. I just have to write April as a string that is inside double inverted commas. Now, if I have more conditions, I can click comma and put criteria range two. Now, my second criteria is that the production value should be more than 300. So what is my criteria range two? Column A to A comma, my criteria was it should be greater than 300, inverted comma clause, bracket clause. Let's click enter and see. See, the answer is 2939. That is the sum of the values after two conditions are true. Well, that was a very informative function, right? Now, let us look into another complex situation. That is, in a day-to-day -day basis, we have many data wherein we'll have to filter a lot of contents, right? For example, uh, let's go here and filter out some data. 130, 342, 849. So the data which we have right now with the, in our hand is given like this. Now. If I want the sum of only these data and if I go and type in is equal to sum of A to A or let's say even the range, if I select like this, I'll get a huge number which is wrong 
The reason why it is wrong is that it is regardless of whatever you have filtered out here, it is still taking the sum of every digit that is between A5 and A40. So we need to put a function that will find the sum of only the data that is present in the filtered column. Let's find out how we can do it. For that, we need to use a function called subtotal is equal to subtotal. Now, subtotal is not something that we can use just with some function. We can use subtotal with a lot of other functions. So let's start the opening the bracket. And here we have suggestions asking for what we need to find. Do we have to find average? Do we have to find count? Count A, max, which all these which we'll get into later in this video. Now we need to find the sum. Sum. For sum, we'll write the number 9. Or you can select sum by double clicking here. See, it has automatically selected the number 9. Now, comma, it is asking for the reference 1. That is the range which I have to find the subtotal in. Let's select A. And we can close the bracket and click enter. As you can see, it has given me the subtotal of the data that has been filtered in the sheet. Now, is this dynamic? That is, if I change this filter values, will it change? Let's see. I have selected some more values here and clicked OK. And as you can see, the data changed dynamically. That is, whatever value you have selected here in the filter will get reflected in the sum in this column. Let's select all data here. And we got the value here. This is a very, very useful function if you are someone who uses Excel on a day-to-day -day basis. You really need not have to put in a lot of some function or you don't have to unfilter each time and find the sum or copy paste to another sheet and find the sum. No, you can just find the sum of filter data in the single same sheet itself. These are the very, very important functions that has the property of adding things or the sum property. Now let us talk about the count property. Counting data is very, very important and useful in Excel. Let's see how counting works. Now I have a lot of data here, right? These are numerical data and these are text data. Now the first function we are going to discuss is count function. C-O-U-N-T, count function. Now, count function is used in order to count the number of numerical values in a range. Let me repeat that. It will count only the numerical values. That is, if I am putting is equal to count, and now it is asking to select the value. Here, value is the range. I am selecting the range here and clicking enter. It has given me 20, but if you see, you can see that there are 21 rows here, but still it gave me only 20 because one row is not numerical. It is a text value. Now let's see another is equal to count of this range. As you can see, there is no numerical value inside this range at all. So we are expecting a zero as the answer. Let's close the parenthesis and click enter see the answer is zero so count is a function that we use to find the number of numerical values in a range now what if i want to find the number of values in a range regardless of it is whether it is numerical or whether it is alphabetical or whatever for that let us use a function called count a now a is something that we need to add after the term count. Hence, it will count the number of any value that is there in the range. As you can see, the explanation given by them is counts the number of cells in a range that are not empty. Let's see, count A and let's declare our range here. Close the parenthesis and click. 21 is the answer because there are 21 rows inside uh, 21 cells inside this range that are not empty 
let us see by emptying two random cells here i have three empty cells here and see the number has changed into 18 so even if i am emptying cells in between the range it doesn't matter it will take the number of cells with non-empty values and it will give the answer here now what if i want to find the answer of uh, the number of blank cells in a particular range let's see is equal to count blank and inside this we can give the range that is b to b and close the parenthesis and click enter see the number is very large why is the number so large because we selected the entire column so if we select the entire column every cell that comes below this is being counted as a blank cell right we do not want that situation here so in order to avoid that we should always give a very definite range that is count blank and select the range specific range where you want to select click enter and we got the value 3 because we have three blank cells in the defined range now this is a very very interesting and important function that probably you will have to use in your daily life now let's see the next one that is what if you have a particular condition that is in this given range you want to count the number of values that is january only the text which has the term january in it you want to count so what will you do in that situation or for example what if you want to count the number of cells where the value is more than 200 so these are conditions remember that we found the sum of a particular range but with given conditions that is the same thing we are going to do right now itself now is equal to we should collide two functions in previous example we collided the sum function and the if function because we want to find the sum of the values with conditions here we should collide the count function and the if function because we need to find the count of the values in a range with conditions so is equal to count if bracket open we have to declare the range let us say b to b is the range comma what is the condition the condition i am giving here is january so i want to count the number of cells which has the term january in it in the column b let me close the bracket and click enter see there are four january's in this given range now what if, have, what if i have a more than one condition it's very similar to this sum ifs condition we have count ifs condition as well is equal to count ifs with an s at the end and open the parenthesis select the criteria range one so the criteria range one is b to b comma let us declare what is i think there is one unnecessary bracket here yeah now after comma we need to declare what is the criteria in B2B, the criteria is that it should be January. It should be January. Now, let, let's put a comma and the second criteria range is A to A. Let's put a comma and what is the criteria? That it should be more than, uh, let's say, 500. Let's close the bracket and click enter see the answer is 2 we knew that there are more than 2 Januarys here 1 2 3 and 4 although there are 4 Januarys in this list the answer we got is 2 because the second condition was that the production number should be more than 500 see the first January had only 382 so it won't be taken now the second one is 849 it will be taken 
the third one is 342 it won't be taken the fourth one is 651 it will be taken so only two out of this january will be counted because only two out of them satisfy the condition that we have provided we can add as many as conditions as we wish and make it more complex it is up to your desire and your project now remember i told you that i can use a count if function and find out uh, what are what is the count of data that has the text january in it maybe i don't want it to be too much specific maybe i want to count the number of text which starts with the letter j so it is not just january january is there june is there july is there so let's see how to do that so i'll start with is equal to count if because it is a count function with condition i can also use count is but since i have only one condition i'm just going with count if count if bracket open and the range here is b to b because i'm going to apply the condition on this range comma now the condition is that usually we'll write it as january if i want the text inside this range that has to be counted is january now here we just want the letter to be j that is the starting letter of the text should be j i can't just type in j here because then it will search for the complete text that has only the letter j in it we should put a star here that means any term that starts with j and any characters can come after it let's close the bracket and click enter we got four as the answer here because we have only january here we didn't add june or anything let's add june here and see see the number has changed into five the reason is that it counted any text that started with the letter j now what if i want the last letter to be something let's say y so we'll start with star and end with y the reason is that we can have any characters but the last character should be y that is the condition here let's click enter we have eight because january february january february january february january february we have eight such values now what if i want a the count of text which has a particular letter or a combination of letters inside the text that is i don't care what the starting letter is or i don't care what the end letter is but there should be an a or a, a b c inside this particular text let's see we'll start with star because we don't care what the starting letter is and we'll end with star because we don't care what the ending letter is but we do care what comes in between this so one letter we can put as p as an a print i put p and clicked enter so the answer is five one two three four five now i want the letter to be r let's see we can also put p r which is again five because a pril 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 now let's say r see there are 17 because april is there march is there february is there january is there most of these characters has uh, uh, an r in it that's why the number is 17 now now this is something that we have discussed about count so today we discussed about two things that are sum and count functions now let us also talk about average function which is very important just like the sum function and the count function the very basic average function is that is equal to average just type in average and open the bracket and now we can give the number here that is one five ten if i want the average of these three numbers i can just type in the numbers inside here and click enter now the average of 1 and 5 and 10 is 5.33 recurring now but i don't want these exact numbers i want the numbers to be from the range so let's see is equal to average 
and I'm selecting the range as A to A and I'll close the bracket and click enter. See the answer is 562.75. That is the average of all the numbers that are there in this range. Now just like in sum function and count function there are many other things that we can use with this very basic average function now let's talk about average ifs that is you want to find the average of something but there are conditions to it let's see now the condition is that i want to find the average of numbers inside here which is more than 500 if it is below 500, I don't want it to be taken at all. Let's see. Is equal to average if range is A to A comma. Now the criteria is that it is greater than 300 or 500 as I've told. And I'll close the bracket and click enter. See 753.6363 recurring is the answer for that condition now just like sum ifs and count ifs we can also use multiple conditions with average that is average ifs with an s as you can see open the bracket now we can declare the average range that is a to a comma the criteria range which criteria are we going to put it let's put b to b comma next the criteria which we want to get let's say april the value should be april now next condition criteria is a to a and the condition i'm going to give is it should be more than 300 let's close the bracket and click enter the answer is 734.75 now as we have discussed today, we, we learned about sum function, count function, and average function. And in those, we, we were able to use these functions along with condition functions. That is the if function. Now, I'll talk about one more average thing. That is, if I want to find the average of this data, but I want to exclude the top 10 percentage and the very least 10 percentage. That is, uh, if, for example, if you are taking the average of marks scored by the students in a class, but you don't want to include the top 10 students and if you don't want to include the last 10 students, but you want to find the average of the middle people, let's see how it is done. What you can do is start by typing in trim mean and inside that, let's select the array the array is the range here now after the range let us declare the percentage the percentage that we want to exclude from the top and the bottom so here i'm going with 10 percentage i don't want the top 10 percentage and the bottom 10 percentage close the bracket click enter the answer is 564.7272 this was a bonus function i talked about this may not be something that you used in a daily life but it is always wonderful to know this function you can always excel in excel if you know your functions right this was well the part one of the series and for more advanced functions you can look for the part two video and i will put the put the link in the description box as well i hope this video was useful for you Let's see in another, another video with yet another topic.